It's time for the Wendy Williams Show. Today, the Queen of Mean, Lisa Lampanelli. How did she drop over 100 pounds? We'll get the dish. Plus, newly crowned Miss America, Mallory Hagan is back in New York and on the couch. And Wendy's got all the latest juicy hot topics. Now, here's Wendy. Crowd, we've got a really entertaining show for you today. There's a new photo scandal with Coco T and another man. Oh. I know. Plus, there's a new TV show about to pop off about Jessica Simpson and her life, and well, we'll talk. <laughs> and there's a controversial reality show that gets canceled even before it hit the air. Thank God. And we'll talk about that too. Let's t let's talk. It's time for hot topic. <laughs> I want to welcome back our lovely Suzanne. She, she, she had the flu, and now she's all better. Happy Halloween, Suzanne. And I'm glad that you're back. Thank you, I'm glad you're back. Yes. So anyway, um, everybody, I'm really excited about the new season of American Idol, which starts tonight at eight o'clock on Fox. It's two hours tonight, and then uh, two hours tomorrow. And is it, is it terrible to say that I'm not really looking forward to the competition as much as I am what goes on with Mariah Carey and Nicki Minaj? <laughs> is, that, is that you too? Yeah. Are you a little embarrassed to admit that too? <laughs> she said no. <laughs> anyway, I'm looking forward to that tonight on Fox. So anyway, um, this thing with Coco Tea, Ice Tea's wife. I mean, you, you know, um, I still love their love. You know, I've talked about that before here on the show. Coco and Ice are friends to the show. It pains me to have to revisit this story, but I'm the Hot Topics lady, so what am, what am I supposed to do? Um, okay. A few weeks ago, you remember the ruckus that was caused because um, Coco posed very provocatively with a little-known rapper from the Bay Area named... Uh, named it AP9. Well, here's AP9. <laughs> he looks a little bit like the rapper Ja Rule, just a little bit. <laughs> hey, Rule! Anyway, um, so now there's a new photo and a new man. Coco met this new guy in Vegas. You know, she's out there. She's uh, filling in for Holly Madison, uh, Hugh's ex-girlfriend. Holly's pregnant. Coco's now doing Peep Show in Vegas. And this new, this new guy's name is Moose Diesel. <laughs> So stupid, Moose <laughs> Diesel. Anyway, um, he posted this photo of him with his hands all over Coco's butt. And Coco's got the look in her eye. Coco, that is such the sex look. I didn't even recognize you in that picture. Like normally, she's very tongue in cheek and really kitschy coo about her sex, but that right there with the dim eyes, you're looking like <laughs> Anyway, whatever, or it just might be a late night, who knows. But the point that I'm trying to make to you is that um, he posted the picture and then she frantically sent him a, 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 something through the computer. What is that, a text? <laughs> uh, uh, the Twitter. 
she, she sent him something private where nobody else could see and then he posted the private message because, well, he's a, he's a jerk, but Coco, you should have known better. So now, now here we go. Here's, here's what she, a frantic message from Coco, privately to him. Hey, this is Coco. Can you please take the picture of you and I off your page? It's not a good look, thank you. <laughs> and then here's what Moose Diesel wrote back <laughs> on Instagram, which is now public. Moose Diesel writes, so I get this direct message on Twitter, just wondering a few things. A, is Ice T mad? B, it's not a good look for you, not me. <laughs> C, you knew what you were doing when you took the pick. And D, you mad, Coco? Oh. He played you good, girl. <laughs> I mean, of course Ice-T is mad. Now, I don't know for a fact that Ice-T is mad, but wouldn't you be mad? Yeah. Uh, uh, and yeah, it's not a good look for Coco. It's a great look for you. That's a nice behind. <laughs> um, and yeah, Coco, you did know what you were doing when you took the picture. And yes, Moose Diesel, he is mad. Okay, here's a few. Here's how I wanna um, explain this. Uh, a little tough talk for you too, Coco, girl. Girl. Anybody who's followed your relationship with Ice-T knows that your body is your money maker and that it, it's not unusual for Coco to take pictures with men with their hands on her assets. She's been doing this for years. Ice has always been very secure about it, which is part of the reason that I love their love because they accept each other in a way that perhaps we wouldn't be the bigger people to accept. You know, you, you know what I'm saying? Um, but. Sometimes tricks like that get old. Like when you get older in life and when you are more deeply in love with the person that you're with. And I suspect that Ice-T is probably P.O.'d that these men are now pawing his girl. Your body is something to be looked at, like on the stage in Peep Show. It's it, not, not to be touched anymore. Now, see, the act is getting old. Ice is pissed, guys are playing you out, and I follow on the computer, guys are playing your man out too, saying he's, he's got a weak pimp hand now, like he's lost his game, you can't turn an H into a housewife, and all this other kind of stuff. Yes, but you know what? That's because of what you put out there letting people paw you. That would be like me letting people paw my legendary bouzons. <laughs> They try, and I quickly back the hand. Men and women, like, you know, because I'm tall, I've had people who wanna take pictures like laying on them, and some people have gotten away with it, uh, you know, but I don't like that. I don't like when people um, wanna touch. I don't, I don't, and I don't deal with that. And you know what? I'll go so far as to say, and I won't say her name. There is a, one of my peers, a talk show host, who is, everybody's shorter than me, so you know, I can't even say, everybody's head always reaches right here. <laughs> But, you know, the height of distastefulness, but we were at a party, and she leans over and puts her head on my breast, and the picture is snapped. And before I can move her head, but I just, you know, I'm just like, I'm, like, I'm done with that. Like, that is, that is so rude. But you've allowed that to happen to your body so for so many years. People are blurring the lines. You need to make a no-touch rule, period. You need to get nice with the forearm, <laughs> and, you know, and just shake it on the stage, that's all. <laughs> girl. I just had to say it like I meant it. So this show about uh, Jessica Simpson's personal life, can I just say I am the only one in this entire Wendy building on my staff who plans on watching it. <laughs> Which I can't even understand that. Why wouldn't you want to watch this show? It's based on her life. You know, she's not just some, some you know, or what you might perceive as a dilly girl who didn't know the tuna fish from the chicken of the sea and she's pregnant. <laughs> Jessica Simpson is the queen of a $1 billion clothing business. How many women in this audience love Jessica Simpson shoes? <laughs> And jewelry, and clothing, and hats. She designs well because she designs affordable. Um, so what I wanna see, okay, so this sitcom um, is going to be, she's gonna be starring in a scripted comedy based on her life. NBC is gonna put it out. NBC is comparing her to Lucille Ball. I don't pay attention to that. Cause they compare, they, people, compare any funny woman to Lucille Ball. But, um, but I think that this is gonna be a great show, if. 
They show Jessica teetering on her heels into her billion dollar, you know, manufacturing company, you know, doing designs. I wanna see Ashley, but I don't wanna see Bronx, the, the, Ashley's baby, her sister. I don't wanna see Bronx and go that deep into that part of the family. <laughs> I do want to see your mother um, being, uh, being comedically pissed when your father, Joe, sashays in the room. <laughs> How you doing, Joe? Uh, since he's now out of the closet. I think that this could be a really good sitcom. Plus, I want to see your, your babies or, you know, acting babies and your, your husband and the whole bit. I think this could be a good show. <laughs> uh, oh. By the way, that other show that she does, Fashion Star, <laughs> returns for season two in March, if you care. <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> I'm just passing a message. Okay, so have you heard about the controversy surrounding this uh, reality special called All My Babies Mamas? Yes. Yes. You have? Oh, you are my, okay, if you haven't, I'll explain to you. You're gonna hate it too. Maybe you won't. Hold on, let me take a sip. Mm -mm. This is full of zinc. We're battling flu in our house. So my husband is sequestered. He's getting, he's on the men's. And then my son and I, we're just like Shh, with the Lysol. And I woke up this morning, I thought I felt a tickle. I'm coming to work no matter what. Is that okay? Is that, is that okay? I mean, I'm just, Did you lose any weight while you had the flu? Um, do I look thinner? I don't know, I can't tell. You're always thin, but I'm just no, saying. I still ate. I could eat. You could eat, okay. <laughs> anyway, um, look. The rapper, uh, it's a one hour special about this Atlanta rapper, his name is Shorty Lowe. He's 36 years old, and he has 11 kids by 10 oh. different women. 11 kids by 10 different women. Oh. He's wearing all of his child support around his neck. <laughs> and I'm gonna get to that Beijing beard in a moment, Shorty Low. I'll explain what that is. Okay, so there are nearly 40,000 smart people who signed a petition demanding that the show not be aired because it's so stereotypical of my people. You know, the whole thing about having multiple children, not marrying any of your baby's mothers, having more baby's mothers than should be legally allowed. You know, my people, my people. Thank you, Oxygen, for caving into the pressure and not deciding to uh, move forward with this special. Thank you so much, thank you, thank you. And then, okay, you know, I don't know Shorty Lowe, but we Google schmoogled here. He's worth $2.5 million. Which, you know, okay, that's nice money, but not when you have 11 babies, mothers, and 10 kids. Um, he used to be a drug dealer, according to what we saw in Atlanta, but he cleaned up his life and he founded a record label. Um, um, also, he has a 19-year-old girlfriend and uh, one of his kids is in their 20s. And, and, and he's 36. Thank you, Oxygen. And you know, and another thing, if you're wondering why his beard looks like Sharpie, okay, I'm gonna explain to you what Beijing is. It is, it is like the wackest thing. Everybody laughs when they see people with it. You might not know, you might not recognize it. No, that's not thick hair. That's, um, you know, they go, it's temporary dye that'll mess up your pillowcases. It's temporary dye that uh, guys use to sharpen their beard mustache situation. It's generally a black thing. I've never seen uh, anybody other than black men have it. I remember when I lived in Philly at one point, I was working at radio there and Beijing was really, really big in Philly and it was the first time I had ever heard of it. And you could, it, it, looks, it looks faker than a wig with no baby hair. It looks, it looks just so fake. And, but depending on where you live, it's all the rage. I remember the first person outside of Philly, like first star that I ever saw have it was Flo Rida, um, which I know, Flo, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you, do you see how sharp everything is? But he used to Beijing really hard. I don't know whether he's Beijinging as hard as he, as he used to. But um, yeah, that's, that's called Beijing and they do it for you at the barber shop. A mess. Thank you, Oxygen. By the way, Oxygen, all the executives over here, come here but I also wanna thank you for airing 
the show that I am definitely going to watch. It's called Fat Girl Revenge. <laughs> Sounds good already, right? It's gonna be coming on Oxygen. It's about former fat girls who are now skinny, and they confront the people who humiliated and rejected them. <laughs> I know, yes! I know! I, I, hey, Oxygen, you've got yourself a hit there. Skinny uh, popular girls need not watch. The rest of us, we wanna watch, because I gotta tell you something. Once you straighten out your life and you know something happens, don't you just wanna go back to the people who treated you so mean? Especially guys that wouldn't date you. <laughs> Girls who said, oh, well, you know, Wendy, you're a little big to wear that. Can I tell you something though? Then you get to the other side of maturity and you don't even have time to even address that situation when you see the people. Because I can be very honest with you. I can be very honest with you. You know, growing up an overweight and overly tall, awkward girl, um, it's very painful. And, but having this show, and I'm not gonna mention names on account of I'm the bigger person now, um, and mature. Um, right here in our very studio audience, there have been people who have come from my past who were super mean to me back in the day. And when I see them, I delight. How do you do? It's good to see, it's, it's good to see you. Yes, yes. Do we have a day in time for Fat Girl's Revenge? Because this is going to be my new favorite later reality this, show. Later this year. Later this year. Yay, Oxygen. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, I used to judge men who got manicures. I'm over it now. I'm over it. I've been over it now for several years. Because now I realize that, you know, everybody needs a, cu a proper cuticle pushing and a pop proper cuticle cleaning up. I just don't like it to happen at my nail salon. I'm one of those girls, like when I, I've told you this, when I go, even little Kev, he's like big like a man now at 12 years old. I don't even wanna see it. If you're like this, a little goober boy, then fine. Then you come to the nail salon with your mother. But I don't like a man in the nail salon. Um, and I don't know where Snoop Dogg gets his nails done, <laughs> but I know how he gets them done. Because he posted this picture on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a French manicure. <laughs> and his nails are long. <laughs> his nails, his nails are open. They're long too. They're, they're, they're longer than mine. Mine are dig down to the nubs. Um, but here's my thought. This is something that only Snoop could do because he's eccentric. You know, that's only, by the way, what you smoking on? <laughs> Snoop. Um, this is something that only Snoop could do. I would not want this to be a trend with the men. And, but what I like getting back to the nail salons is that a lot of the nail salons now, I know there's a, a one over in Hoboken and there are a couple around the city where it's just guys. You go in there and it's just a guy thing. The, the decor is for guys, it's a guy thing. So, you know, uh, get your nails done, men, but save the French manicure for Snoop, please. Thank you. You know. And another thing, I don't know how you feel about your man uh, knitting, but Ryan, Go Ryan Gosling knits. Well, <laughs> he says he learned to knit on a movie set a few years ago. And what I do have to say about uh, that is that, you know, a lot of actors and actresses like to knit. I found this out. Um, because uh, there's a lot of downtime on movie sets and so they wanna occupy their time doing something. And so this is what he says. He says, I was in a room full of old ladies who were knitting and it was an all day scene. So they showed me how. It was one of the most relaxing days of my life and if I had to design my perfect day, that would be it. Yeah. Well, first of all, I wonder what Eva Mendez thinks about this you know, their girlfriend and boyfriend. I wonder if he knitted that hat for her. <laughs> and also, would that be fine for you? See, I don't mind the French manicure on Snoop and Ryan Gosling knitting, but I could not imagine walking in to the kitchen and seeing Big Kev, yo, knit one, pearl two. Knit one, pearl two. I, I couldn't imagine that. But on a side note, 
We definitely need to rally for um, Ryan Gosling to play Christian Grey in <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey. And I'm gonna say that until it happens. He needs that job. All right, so keep the claps going. Go ahead, Suzanne, do your job. <laughs> We've got a great show for you. The newly crowned Miss America, Mallory Hagan is here. Uh, you know, she was Miss New York and now, and now she's Miss America. I can't wait to meet her. Plus the very funny and newly skinny Lisa Lampanelli is here as well. So don't go far, thank you. has been called the queen of mean, but after losing over 100 pounds in less than a year, she's now the queen of lean. Please welcome the very funny Lisa Lampanelli. <laughs> that you've got bony feet. Uh, oh, shoot. Bony foot cam, please. <laughs> oh, no, oh, no, don't look at my yes. bunion. No, it doesn't matter, the bun bunion is bunion. <laughs> oh. Listen to me. <laughs> I saw you on, was it Anderson or Dr. Oz? Dr. Oz. But I, you know, because TV adds weight, so you really, I couldn't get a good read. Right, right. What size are you? Oh, I don't even know. I just wear whatever fits. What size are but these pants? all I know is I lost 102 pounds. You look <laughs> Jimmy Big Balls. The fabulous Jimmy, you got it together. Yeah, he lost 85 pounds, so it's great. We can actually touch stomachs. <laughs> okay, wait. First of all, what size were you before? Were oh you in my the 20s? gosh. I was definitely like a, and when I did The Apprentice, I was a size 24, so I was 248 pounds. That's a lot, you know? So you're like a size six now? Uh, about six, about, eight. What you know? girls wouldn't you say? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's fun though. Like you can buy really cheap clothes and they look good. I know, right? That's how they do. <laughs> it's true. It's true. You go on any website and every time it's a woman's size, they add like fifty bucks because yes. of the extra fabric. Well, f you. Guess what? <laughs> Big stores. <laughs> As you can see. You haven't lost your funny bone. You can't, you can't. Okay, let's get into how you lost the weight. Yes. I know you got uh, uh, one, uh, uh, one of those surgeries. Right. Which one? It's called the gastric sleeve. They basically remove 85% of your stomach and it's commitment because you can't get it back. You know? <laughs> no, I asked my doctor, he said, I'm I gotta do now exercising every day. You have to eat very small portions. It's What's like a whale. Small? What's small? Oh my gosh, four ounces, maybe three times a day. So that's like a cup and a half of food. Four ounces. It's a little. Can, it's you, very eat, little. can you eat anything that anything you want? Anything you want, anything you want. But you know, you have to eat protein so you have energy. Do you remember when Al Roker said he pooped in his pants diarrhea at the White House? <laughs> I he, love he that. He thought it was a fart, but it was a shark. Yeah, you shouldn't do that. But what I'm saying is that the first thing I thought of, because I know people in my personal right. life who've had the various surgeries, right. and they say that if you overeat the, the ounces right. in, a, in a sitting, and you can, oh. but it will. Make you feel horrible. Back up on you, yeah. And maybe you can. Yeah, it's not happen. so good. It's not, I luckily have not had an incident yet, but you never know. He I'm went to the bathroom. He went to the bathroom and threw out the underwear, and, and he's at the oh White House God. doing all. I thought George. <laughs> that's what I thought, but that's just me. All right. Back to the gastric sleeve. Yes. Why did you choose the sleeve as opposed to the lap band right. or the gastric bypass or well, something? Well, I'm a woman over 40. In fact, I've never lied about my age. I'm 51 years old. Uh -huh. And I said this. Well, thank you. It's very hard when you get a lap band older because you have a slow metabolism. It's not going to work as well. Okay. So the doctor said he knew I'd
work. Yeah. So we got this thing, and it's luckily, thank God, it worked very well. But now we got to work on ourselves to keep it off. Oh, you in therapy? A, oh, yes. Oh. oh, my God. Because honestly, the only reason people overeat, it seems, is really emotions. Let's be honest. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I love food. You know, you like to stuff the emotions. Speak for yourself, so, oh, sister. Well, look I, at you. I, look I, at I love though. my food, but I, but I love my food and I overeat. But right, I love the right. food. So now we work on ourselves just to be able to never have this happen again because it's just a tool. This is like a tool to get you back where you're supposed to be. Now we got to really do the real work. I just love that you all did it together. So yeah. it's it's a couple, you know, that, that does this together, stays together. Now, yes. I want to ask you about the cleanup surgery. Oh, yeah. Do, do you have this? No, well, see, I've always had what my mom calls bingo arms. You bingo. Know, these things. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah. The, the chips go flying off everybody's card when this thing hits, trust me. But, but these were always there. Yeah. So it wasn't like I have hanging skin. I also see a muscle gym. on the top. A little bit, you know. Uh, uh, what, what are you going to do? What's this? Because uh, pardon me for staring, yeah. but this does not look as flabby as I figured it would look if you no. lose 100 Well, we over also lost pounds. it with exercise, too, and okay. your skin kind of tightens up. So a lot of people lose a lot more, and it just kind of hangs, and that's in a whole other operation. How are your boobs? Uh, oh, they stayed pretty good. They're deep. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. 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 And, and the sex? Is, is, is the sex As better? As I said, we can actually physically touch in the right places yeah. now. I'm keeping it clean for yeah. daytime, folks. Yeah. But yeah, that's very nice. So um, I understand that you're doing stand up at the back to the, the yes, stand up, yes. which she does. I'm sorry for gawking at you and no, everything. That's but all right. I, it's a compliment. You know, I, I just I just love that you did this and that you talk about it freely. Sure. You know, it's like, why hide yeah. anything? So you're doing stand-up at the Apollo? Yes, I'm finally You've doing. Been down. I, yes, well, I was Swirl. down with the homies. Uh, yes, I was. Yes. I must tell you, I had more black guys behind me than Obama. So now that I married a white guy, I figure I got to go back to my roots and at least play for the black people. <laughs> so uh, no, I'm going to do the Apollo on January 30th. Like I've had this dream to do all the big theaters in New York, and I did Radio City, Carnegie Hall, yeah. the Beacon, and now I'm like checking off the Apollo. The Apollo. I'm so excited. Okay. Back to the weight. Yes. Um, by the way, no turkey. Like, you you look good. You lost it slow. Uh, you're tight. I'm um, really, well, in some places. It, well, <laughs> listen to me. Listen. Are you going to be watching that new show on Oxygen, Fat Girl's Revenge? Yes, you I will. Yes, you I will. You know what I mean? I, we, I have a list of people. You know, like, because, you know, I used to go into stores, and I remember going to one particular shishi boutique, and mm -hmm. they looked me up and down, and honestly, they go like, oh, our clothes run small. <laughs> I went in there like, If you weren't here and I saw you in the street, I wouldn't recognize you, Lampanelli. Nobody recognizes me. That's the best thing about it because guess what? Now I don't have to tip anymore. <laughs> you, if the service sucks, you get nothing. <laughs> Look, I want you to stay. Uh, she's going to stay for a minute because, Lisa, I want you to share some of your thoughts on New Year's resolutions for some of our favorite celebrities. Oh, yes. Oh, this is going to be good. Don't <laughs> miss it. Lisa. I just had to, Lisa Lampanelli is still here if you don't recognize her because she lost over 100 pounds. <laughs> but look, before we talk about the resolutions, how much was this surgery? Well, the surgery is about $16,000. And the thing is, it is completely covered by insurance if you qualify. My husband's was 100% paid for. So the fact is, if you have this problem, if you tried everything else like we did, I tried every single diet and they all let me down. So you know what? We said, life's too short to hate yourself. There are people Get watching done. who said you cheated. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, that's okay, because if they think this is the easy way out, if eating this small and exercising every day is the easy way out, then I don't know if it's very easy. So it's a really hard thing and a commitment. So get it if it's right for you. Okay, so now, uh, the new year is here, and people make these stupid New Year's resolutions uh, for themselves, but Lisa's made resolutions for some of our favorite celebrities. Let's start with Taylor Swift. Oh my God, Taylor Swift. All I can say is give your pipes a rest, and I don't mean your vocal cords. <laughs> My goodness. 
Lindsay Lowen. Oh my God, please never stop getting drunk or else I will have nothing to say with my comedy. <laughs> this woman, I, she needs to continue on her path. <laughs> the American Idol judges. Oh my God, throw Nicki Minaj and Mariah into a mud wrestling ring, <laughs> then let them go over the voice. Okay, Demi Moore. Oh my God, date men your own age. Please find out if Regis is available. <laughs> Jennifer Aniston and Justin Thoreau. Oh, Jennifer, get over Brad Pitt once and for all and marry this guy. Brad's already married to that anorexic broad and has 37 kids. <laughs> Calm down. He's worse than Shorty Lowe. <laughs> yeah. Um, look, okay, uh, Katie Holmes. Oh, she should resolve to find a nice, normal guy like John Travolta. <laughs> 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 All right, and finally, Kanye West and Kim Kardashian. Oh, my God. You know that when they name that baby, it's going to start with a K. <laughs> so I have something resolved not to name the kid Cadillac, because Cadillac does not start with a K. <laughs> Lisa, it's always nice to see uh, you. Um, by the way, one more thing before you leave. Are you going to be participating in any way in Celebrity Apprentice? Oh, well, I know the, uh, the All-Star season is coming yes. up. I'm not in the cast, but let's just put it this way. If someone should call me who happens to be a great friend and I help them, I would be very interested. So, hint, in. Be sure you check out Lisa Lampanelli. She's doing stand-up at the Apollo Theater January 30th through February 1st. Uh, still to come, the newly crowned Miss America, but up next, it's time for Ask Wendy. Lisa. Yay. I'm still basking in the glow of Lisa Lampanelli. Like I, like, I love her, and as she was walking away, did you find yourself oddly staring at her, just like staring? Did you notice that she had no back fat? <laughs> like, she had nothing. And it's so funny about those special surgeries, whether you do what she did, or you get the lap band, or the gastric bypass. I'm in the process of writing my sixth book, which is called Ask Wendy. It'll be out in May, and it's available now at Amazon.com. But yesterday, I was answering one of your questions. It's based on questions that you actually asked me. And this woman said that her daughter, she overheard her daughter, who's really embarrassed by her because she weighs over 300 pounds. Oh. And so she said, what should she do? I said, lose weight. <laughs> I said, and you know what? If you're over 300 pounds, I vote for getting one of those specialty surgeries and then keeping the weight off. I don't believe that when you're over 300 pounds, you, you should lose it naturally. You're like, lose it now and then keep it off. Just my opinion. <laughs> How you doing? Doing. Good, how can I help you? Hello, Wendy, my name's Diane. Um, I have two boys, eight and six, and they fight constantly and it drives me crazy. Oh, you're so fortunate. <laughs> <laughs> they fight about toys, video games, yeah. who has bad breath, who yeah. farted, yeah. you know? And my husband says they're boys. And that's what boys do. Yeah, you know, I, I try to punish them, take things away, mm -hmm. give them time out, doesn't seem to be helping, and I would just like them to get along, be I nice. I wish I had two boys that fought. It's a, uh, your house sounds so lively. Well, yeah. Here's what I would suggest, because this works on boys. I, you know this from my own. They're suckers for our tears. Tell them this is hurting mommy terribly. Can you boys please stop? You know what I'm saying. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? If they're not, I mean, that's what boys do. And eventually they will get along and they will be cut buddies and the best of. But I think that your husband's right. Maybe he can intervene. In the meantime, you cry. <laughs> right? I'm good. It's what boys do. Thank good you. you. All right, we have time for one more quick question. How you doing? Hi, Wendy. My name is Elaine. How you doing? How you doing, Elaine? <laughs> good. I'm currently dating and looking for Mr. Wright. But I have two boys, seven and eight. And I think a year is a good enough time to introduce him to someone I'm dating. But my friends say three months. What do you think? Six months to a year. Okay. I mean, are, are these friends moms also? No, not all. <laughs> well, 
then right. therein lies the problem. Right. I think that at three months, a relationship is almost still a hookup. Right. You know what I mean? Do I even like and, it? And, and you're looking for long term. Eventually, mm -hmm. maybe you want to get married or something like that. Is right. that what you're looking for? Yes. There's nothing wrong with uh, saying that out loud. All right, so I say six months to a year, closer okay. to the year mark, right. because you want to be sure that this guy's a keeper before you introduce him to your boys. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, pay very close attention to how this man acts, mm -hmm. to, to even to, and size him up well. All okay. right? Good Thank luck, you. Elaine. Everybody, uh, up next, we're gonna meet the newly crowned Miss America, cause she's here. <laughs> Weekend marked the uh, the 2013 Miss America pageant, and for the first time since Vanessa Williams in 1984, Miss New York brought home the prize. Yeah. Take a look. Your new Miss America is Miss New York. Please welcome Miss America 2013, Mallory Hagan. Because when, when a New York girl wins, I always think that she has more than just pageantry. I always think, you know, there's something about being a New York girl that I just feel, you're, you're just a down girl. Yeah, well, you, you yeah, know? Try to be, you know. Yeah. How you doing? How you doing? I am so excited to be here. I love your show so much. So thank you, thank Mallory. Thank you for having me. Thank you. All right, so when it was announced, what was going through your mind at the time that you, when you won? Shock, utter, like, complete disbelief. Yeah. I had no idea that was coming. I was standing there and I was just thinking, wow, I'm first runner up. Like, this is gonna be great. How awesome I made it this far, knowing that my life is gonna change forever thanks to my $50,000 scholarship. So, yeah. life's changed forever, like from now on. And so, the, uh, yeah, thanks. I like your crown. Thank you. Do, do, you, do, wear, I. do you wear it a lot? <laughs> Um, I, you know, I wear it when I'm asked to. Yes. I slept with it last night. No big yeah. deal. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. No, the crown's wonderful. It stands for the four points, the service style, scholarship, and success. So they actually have meaning. Who knew? Uh, yeah, so we, we try and promote all four of those those areas as Miss America's. Now, I see you have a Brooklyn bracelet on. You're, she lives in Brooklyn. I do, yeah. Which makes you even more of uh, just a regular girl with a yeah. whole lot of chutzpah yeah. who happens to be Miss America. <laughs> happens to be, yeah. Now, so you're originally from Alabama. I am, I'm originally from the Auburn Opelika area in Alabama. Yeah. I grew up there and then about four and a half years ago I moved to New York. Yeah. And so I've just been trucking around the city. Uh, I started participating in Miss New York a couple years ago and that's been paying for my education so far. Yeah, um, I heard you were going to school right here. Right, yeah. right around this block. I've been at FIT, Fashion Institute. That's right around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> I've been studying uh, advertising, marketing, and communications, which is, you know, Miss America is all about education and yes. scholarships. So I'm looking forward to finishing that up after my year's over with. Yeah. So a little birdie told me that you have a boyfriend. I do. And you're down with the swirl. Uh, <laughs> that, that means a black white relationship. And a little birdie <laughs> told me that he looks like a young Barack Obama. Maybe. He's very handsome. And I'm, tall. And tall, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> um, so what does he think about uh, the whole pageantry of it all? He, you know, he knows that this year is about me, and it's about the Miss America organization and my service to the organization. Yes. So he's very excited for me, uh, but he's gonna let me have this time to, to really just promote the organization and, and have my year of service. Yeah, I like your chin dimple. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no, no, I, I'm into that. Like, like to, you know, <laughs> if I had the guts, I would get one carved into my face. I think chin dimples are so sexy on men and women. Thank you. They are. Thanks. So what's your hometown say back in Alabama? Oh, every 
everyone is so excited. I had, I think there was 32 people from Alabama that came yeah. uh, to support me out in Las Vegas. So Aww. everyone is just thrilled. My parents are ecstatic. Aww. But it's kind of weird too. Like we had the, the mailman took a picture of our house the other day. Uh -huh. My mom was like, I think the mailman just took a picture of our house. Yeah. <laughs> So it's, you know, it's getting a little strange, but it's okay. I heard that now you can, girls can get surgery, injectables, or whatever they need to do to enhance themselves to be in the Miss America pageant now. They, you know what? Uh, there's no rules in the Miss America pageant that say you can't. I chose not to. Uh, but did you know, you, Was the pressure on, though? Because you know a lot of the girls you did. You know, actually, no, it's not. You, I, I think that there's nothing wrong with, with aging gracefully, and I'm not even old yet. But yeah, I'm, yeah. You know, if you, if, you, if you choose to do that, if you choose to do that, that's absolutely your decision, and I, I don't judge you for it. Yeah. I just chose not to. Well, since you're a New York girl, I want to send you off in style. Oh. I've got something that I think will be a big hit at the club <laughs> when, when you're doing it. <laughs> it says, it's, it's a Miss America sash, yes. and on the back, oh, Miss America, and on the back it says, how you doing? I love Wear this to the club oh. and get down, Mallory. I will. Congratulations yeah. to you. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming to our show. Thanks. This is Mallory Hagan. Hagan, everybody, our new Miss America. Up next, we're going to share some of your comments about today's hot topics. Keep it here. For fan fee Wendy fan feedback, I love this. You know, earlier on Hot Topics, we were talking about Oxygen canceling the show featuring rapper Shorty Lowe. He's the one with the 11 kids and 10 different babies' mothers. Public outrage, uh, Oxygen canceled the show. And here's what some of you guys said on my Facebook page. Um, Ava D writes, Oxygen is being hypocritical. If they can keep a show like Bad Girls Club on uh, the air, then this show should have been, uh, should have seen the light of day. Kelly C says, why glorify a black man who doesn't seem to get it? Why not glorify a black man who does do it right? Talk about typecasting. And finally, Jackie J says, glad, uh, glad it canceled the show. Shorty Lowe doesn't need, doesn't need a vasectomy. How about just cutting it off? <laughs> Uh, online, uh, Wendy Poll, 77% of you, uh, Wendy Watchers, said that Oxygen made the right choice by canceling the Shorty Low uh, travesty. And here's what you said about Oxygen's new show, Fat Girls Revenge, which premieres later in the year. L uh, Lori E says, I would so rock that show. All the girls that teased me in high school are all the way fatter than they used to be. <laughs> LOL, I know. And Roxanne uh, T writes, just be happy and healthy. That's in your face enough. I appreciate you guys uh, and your fan feedback. You know, I live for your comments. Thank you all very much uh, for being part of the conversation today. If you'd ever like to be a part, why don't you just follow me on Facebook and Twitter? We'll be right back. Thanks. <laughs> Fantastic time today. Lisa Lampanelli, you are over. You look so good. And Miss America, Mallory Hagan, I loved meeting you. Thank you. My co host, my studio audience, I live for you showing up here. Tomorrow, from the girl group TLC, the one and only Chili will be here. And since it's winter, fashion expert Liliana Vasquez is going to show up and she's going to teach us how to properly layer our attire. I love you for watching today. See you next time on Wendy. Bye bye. <laughs>